You know, I really have to question Marth's dedication to saving Mesodon. I mean, he's doing alright, but he really could be doing more- Oh my god, he's crossing the ocean on foot! Holy shit! Leaving painful memories, and also a lot of bodies? Like, Lang killed a lot of people. Who exiled the oppressive generals, which was essentially all of them. He assembled the exiled officers, which was a lot of officers. What I'm trying to say is, Mesodon kinda sucks. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say they're powerful Draco Knights. It's only Chapter 2, after all. Ah, so we have the first one of these. Okay, so, uh, every once in a while, at the beginning of a chapter, you'll basically get a little check uh, for one of your stats. Uh, depending on how high your stat is, Jagan will say a different thing to you. Uh, it doesn't really determine anything other than just, you know, Jagan will insult you directly to your face if your stat sucks. Of course, this is a speed check, and Iris has never had a problem with speed. You know, I've been playing this game for years, and I've never had anything lower than, hey yeah, you would outspeed the fucking White Wings. We also have the first occurrence of this, so Anna here is going to introduce a new mechanic, which is also in Awakening and Fates, and I would say this is mechanically probably the worst one, though at the same time, Presentation-wise, a little bit better than Awakening. Uh, How's Everyone is basically the barracks from Awakening, and uh, basically just the random people hanging around in my castle and Fates, which I find is the best one, because you just talk to people and a thing will happen. Uh, in Awakening, my big problem is you have to watch people just slowly walk in every time. Actually, to be fair, I think you can skip that, but... Either way, very slow, and not much more interesting than this. However, as you'll see from How's Everyone, this one... Well, you don't really get amazing things from it. Uh, we got a uh, stat boost. That's temporary, of course. It's only for this chapter. Uh, Cecil also got it. I believe this is an experience growth. Yep, Ryan got more experience. Uh, this is actually a... Um, uh, basically his support's going up. Uh, this is only for the avatar in this game. You don't actually get supports between other characters. Awakening fixed that, so, you know, non-avatar characters would have their supports raised by conversations, which was very nice. Uh, you can also get items from this, but also they're usually not very good items. It depends. Sometimes you just get completely worthless stuff, other times you get things that are sort of useful. Like the glass weapons, which are very powerful, but super delicate. Uh, and I think that's just about it. Uh, experience, temporary, stat up, items... Yeah, I think that's all four things. Anyway, we're having a conversation with Rhodey, and uh, I should add a da 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 because Iris is getting lost again. Also, I love this. General Lang in his extremely rude attitude, which... Is really underselling Lang, who's kind of the worst. Oh, you know, Lang, he just uh, murdered everyone, burned the villages to the ground, and anyone who was left he kidnapped. <sighs> but geez, what a rude guy. He really needs to go back to school and learn his manners. I'm glad you asked. Actually, I'm not, because that brings up bad memories. Regardless, I'll tell you about Minerva. And then Minerva embraced Macaulus with an axe to the chest. I mean, I never use them together, except in Echoes. Oh, and of course, here's my favorite triangle attack line in the entire series. It's just you and me, and my sister's triangle attack! I really wish that was the one they used for Echoes. I don't know. That's the way I read it. Might not be as interesting to everyone else, but I love that.
Anyway, those are the conversations for this episode. I think we would have gotten a ruddy conversation even if I didn't get that uh, how's everyone line, but either way, uh, this map should look familiar if you've played Shadow Dragon. Of course, this one isn't nearly as bad as the uh, Shadow Dragon version of this, because, of course, that was a near endgame chapter, and it was a huge pain in the ass. But regardless, this one is probably one of the harder chapters, at least at the beginning of the game. It's one that I have a little bit of difficulty with. Paula's really torn up about it. His Dragon Knight squad of two Dragon Knights. Yeah, about the flanking thing, um, I'm very much not going to do that. Okay, so, uh, we're not going to talk about Katria just yet, although I'm going to focus on her for a moment, because as you can see, over there we've got a village, and we can recruit someone, namely Kord. Hey, how's it going, Kord? Uh, Kord is actually, uh, he wasn't in the original Mystery of the Emblem. They added him for the remake. So, you didn't get an axe user for quite a while in Mystery of the Emblem, if I remember correctly. Uh, I can't think of the chapter off the top of my head because I'm kind of drunk right now, but uh, future me will talk about uh, Katria and Kord. So, in the original game, Katria was your first Pegasus Knight. Here, though, she isn't. Anytime you go through the prologue, you get some experience on Seda, unless you refuse to use her. So, Seda does actually have a little bit more availability here than she did in the original game, and thanks to her Wing Spear, that does actually put Seda in a pretty good position. That being said though, while Katri doesn't have a signature weapon, she definitely makes up for it. Her HP and strength growth rates are way higher than Seda's, and her defense rate is, uh, 5% higher, so it technically counts. And while her speed is lower than Seda's, her own is good enough where it probably doesn't matter that much. So all in all, Katri is actually a really good unit. I guess it's also worth noting, but she generally seems to be sort of the crit-heavy character of the three Pegasus Knights. She tends to start with a killer weapon of some sorts, with the exception of this game, and both Gaiden and its remake Echoes. In those games, she starts with an Angel Ring. Here, she just starts with kind of ordinary equipment, probably because it's Chapter 2. It's not really a big deal, I thought I'd just make note of it. Especially since the Killer Lance is actually C rank, and, you know, she does have a C rank in Lances. No, you don't get a Killer Lance this early, that would be super broken. But I'm just saying, she could if it were available. Guess what? Cord's back, baby. And while that E rank in axes might look kinda crappy, and it is considering there are better options very soon, the rest of his stats are actually not terrible. He is guaranteed a point of HP each level up, and that strength's not that bad either. Of course, once you start getting to his other, you know, useful stats, it starts becoming a coin flip. 40% skill means he probably won't be able to hit things that well, and 50% speed means you may or may not have a fast cord. It all depends on how lucky you get. And of course the 20% defense, not amazing. Not amazing at all. Okay, they've been talked about. So, uh, I do not like flanking in this map. Uh, the original chapter, as in the uh, Shadow Dragon chapter, uh, had units on both sides just like from the start, and of course the enemies were strong enough where you did want to flank. Here though, it's mainly about the beginning and those three uh, hunters there. They're definitely a pain in the ass, so what you're going to want to do is bait them to one side. Don't spread your units out. If you do that, then the hunters are more likely to go after, you know, both groups of units. 
Now, I am sending units this way, but uh, the hunters aren't really going to focus on them. Uh, I just need a whole lot of people to go over to the houses, and by a whole lot of people, I mean two. Cecil's here, of course, but she's actually after that thief who the villagers here really want dead. I kind of love that. That thief escaped with the lady sword. Don't let him out of your sight. Kill! Kill! Of course, these guys aggroing might be a little bit of trouble, except for the fact that they are definitely uh, impeded by the forests. Remember, though, everybody but Kotri is also impeded by the forests. Thankfully, though, while there are three hunters, one of them is recruitable. And Kotri is just so sad about Warren aiding the rebels, because, I mean, aren't we all broken up? I mean, come on, it's Warren. Don't you remember Warren? Uh, I, t to think he would betray Mesodon, I just, I, I can't believe it. No, Warren wasn't in the previous game. He's completely new to Mystery of the Emblem. <laughs> He's an original character, and I don't know why Katri is so broken up over him joining the rebels. Oh well, he's easy enough to recruit, other than the fact that we do have to send Kotria right into danger, uh, but she can help alleviate the danger because, you know, one of them did wind up in the perfect spot to be killed by her. Which is good. That's why you don't want those hunters to separate, because if they do, it's harder to kill them all in one go, and I think, even with the addition of this guy, I don't think this hunter's gonna be much of a problem. Okay, I know I make fun of Warren for basically being the most boring man alive, but as a playable character, he's actually really good. Now, you know how I've been criticizing archers a lot for their movements? Warren's a hunter, which is basically an archer, but without the problem of movements. They are technically better, with the exception, of course, of whatever growth rates they happen to be stuck with, Warren here is a little more towards the hardy side. He's got high HP and strength, decent skill, his speed and luck are a little lackluster, but honestly that's not a gigantic deal. His only really glaring weakness is, of course, no resistance, but, you know, it's the DS games, that'll happen. Even in this game, where resistances are technically kinda better sometimes. His low defense isn't ideal either, so you probably shouldn't be attacking too many other long-ranged units. I think it's also worth noting that while his speed growth rate does look really low, it's actually improved over the original Mystery of the Emblem, in which it was 10%, meaning without certain buffs, Warren was more or less useless because his speed never really got good? You really can't afford a 10% speed growth. I mean, a base speed is... okay, but it's not gonna last for all that long. Now, uh, looking at the map, there aren't actually any new uh, hunters in the area, so the difficulty here in harder modes is probably just that these guys get statted up. There are more Draco Knights uh, near the boss in Lunatic mode, but uh, that could actually be a bit of a problem. The Draco Knights here are probably some of the tougher units, but... I don't know what weapons they wield first and foremost, but otherwise, uh, you also have an archer, of course. Well, two! Well, no, not even! You have up to three archers! It's just, you know, Ryan's the only permanent archer here. I'm bringing Gordon in for funsies and, you know, kind of recruited the dumbass known as, uh, Warren. As this villager says, Warren's a bit of an idiot. <laughs> I do love that line so much, but... Yeah, there's your hint that uh, Warren and Katria know each other somehow. Because, <laughs> uh, let's be honest, he wouldn't have known otherwise, even if you've played other games. Because he's not in the other games. Well, games. Well, no, he could have been in Echoes, you know. Could have been a character carried over from Valentia. You never know. But he's not. Alright, so let's take care of this ruffian. And he's going to drop quite the useful item, which of course is the Lady Sword. Uh, somebody else mentioned it earlier. So the Lady Sword, true to its name, and you know, I mentioned it earlier as well, can only be used by women. Uh, I, I guess, just by naming it the Lady Sword, 
men won't use it because, oh god, it's it's a girl sword. I don't want to use this. So it's got 25 uses, which is pretty good. Uh, it's got a might of 12, which uh, I'm certainly not looking up silver sword right now, but I think it's actually on par with silver sword, right? Okay, uh, yeah, might of 12. So yes, uh, if you don't know, silver swords are a late game uh, weapon. Silver weapons are pretty much the best, like, normal type weapons you can get. Obviously, there's stuff better than the silver sword, but, like, it's generally stuff not, you know, sold in shops. So, weapons like the brave weapons or even the special weapons. Yeah, stuff like that, that I would not count that as, like, a normal weapon. Silver is pricey and doesn't have a lot of availability, but it's pretty strong. So yeah, uh, we just get a very low-ranked weapon that's easy to use and as powerful as a late-game sword. Uh, so yeah, uh, that is what I was talking about earlier. That is one of Cecil's major advantages over the other two Cavaliers we start with, because the Lady Sword is really damn good. There is more than one in the game, but I don't think we see one for at least a little while. And it's also not a weapon you can buy in a shop, so... I wouldn't suggest overusing it, but it's absolutely a weapon you do want to use in a pinch. And also, how the hell did I get magic? Uh, anyway though, yeah, this chapter, as you might have noticed, gets pretty easy once you, you know, get past the beginning bit. If the hunters decide to move away from each other into positions that are harder for you to kill, you run the risk of getting Katria killed, so do be wary of that, but as long as they don't do that and you can take them out in one round, you really don't need to flank the enemies. Uh, again, at least not in uh, normal mode. You probably do have to in harder modes just because of all the enemy stat-ups. Uh, I can't imagine you'd... Oh, well, not bad. Uh, I can't imagine you'd be able to take care of you know, these sorts of enemies in a quick amount of time. Maybe you can, again. Uh, I've not really played much of the harder modes, because enemy reinforcements annoy me in that game. As for the Draco Knights, uh, if you play it smart, which, you know, smarter than me because I'm not really playing it all that well, uh, separate your archers so that there's one on both sides, try to use the force to your advantage, pay attention to what weapons the Draco Knights are using because, uh, Dragon Knights can actually use axes or lances. Of course, both of the ones here are using lances, so, you know, use cord or use one of your lance users. Uh, I definitely wouldn't suggest using a sword user. It's probably not fatal at this point, but, you know, better safe than sorry, right? Also, thank goodness Ryan got a point of speed. <laughs> I believe I mentioned this earlier, but, uh, the previous version of this LP, Despite my praises of Ryan, he wasn't really doing all that well until promotion. I mean, obviously, once he hit promotion, he started kicking ass, but uh, his low speed was really hurting him. He got basically nothing, to the point where I actually had to use a speed wing before the end game for him, which is very unusual. Oh wow, and we're basically done with this chapter. <laughs> At this point, we're just going to surround the boss, who I believe is Rumel, not Rook? Rook is the guy leading the rebellion, and this is a similarly named man, but he's not the same man. We'll be taking out the leader of the rebels later. For the time being, though, this is just, you know, some dude. Just some guy who happens to be in semi-charge, but not full charge. Okay, so it's Rumel, not Rook. Alright, so, as you can see, Ryan would kick the shit out of him, and he's using an axe, so... Um, yeah, this is gonna go well for him. His hit rate really isn't good. I mean, 46 is okay, and the hand axe means he can counter-attack your archers, but that's not, like, a huge threat, because he doesn't do enough damage, and provided they're not completely slow, you're not gonna get doubled by him. And he, again, even if I did get doubled by him there, he wouldn't have done that much damage to Ryan. And just like in the last version of this LP, he didn't even lay a finger on me. I did not get hit once by this guy. He's just so bad. Oh, Rumel, you are really bad at fighting. Hey, it's Linde! So this just so happens to be the mage that I, you know, favor in Shadow Dragon. Of course, in that game, you don't get Linde until 
one of the later chapters in the game, where she's also fairly low-leveled, like she is here. We'll talk about her more next time, of course, but, uh... Part of the reason I use Linde and Shadow Dragon is because you get her so early in this game. I also heard you can open chests with it. I don't know how that works, but whatever. I'm not gonna question the weird magic shield. It's like strange things are happening. I mean, to be fair, that does seem like a day that ends in Y for Nina. She's kind of had a lot of tragedies visited upon her, so if she's crying, you know, that's kind of par for the course.